A Study Guide to Paul's Letters Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from his this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Galatians 1, 1, 4, 5. Your Bible, Paul's letters, your Bible simplified. But now, Acts 9, Romans to Philemon, the fellowship of the mystery. Ephesians 3, 9, Paul's salvation to the rapture. Time passed, Genesis, Acts 8, prophecy to Israel before Paul was saved. Ages to come, Hebrews to Revelation, prophecy to Israel after the rapture. The Bible is laid out, prophecy, mystery, prophecy. Early believers, heavenly believers, early believers, Israel, body of Christ, Israel. Old covenant, no covenant, new covenant. Time past, but now, ages to come. The Bible contains instructions for two groups of people who will live in the kingdom of God, composed of two realms, heaven and earth. The instructions to the body of Christ are in Romans to Philemon, while the rest of the Bible is, is for those believers who will live in Christ's kingdom on earth. The body of Christ and the dispensation of grace in which we live both began with Paul, salvation in Acts 9, and ends in the rapture. 1 Timothy 1.16, Matthew says the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 3.2, 4.17, or as the days of heaven upon the earth, Deuteronomy 11.21, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the body of Christ. Introduction, we must understand the three rites in the following order. The, number one, write Gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 4. Number two, write Bible, King James Bible. Number three, write Division, 2 Timothy 2, 15. Write Gospel. Problem, everyone inherited and Adam sin nature, and then we all sin ourselves. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and dead by death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Romans 5.12 Therefore we can never be righteous enough to be accepted by God. God is holy and cannot tolerate anyone unholy. Sinners would be liberated before Him. Solution When we believe the gospel of Christ, then we receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I, Paul, declare unto you the gospel, by which also you are saved, which I also received from Christ, how by crucifixion that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 4. The Son of God, death for sin, burial, resurrection was prophesied, but Paul received a new information, which is that he did so for our sins in mystery, his heavenly group. Also, Christ's blood sacrifice on the cross not only paid for the penalty of believers in Israel's sins, but also for ours. We cannot go to heaven without the Spirit of the Son of God in us, which we receive when we believe. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 The Son of God lived a perfect life, keeping God's law perfectly. Psalms 47 and 8 then he died our death for us. God is saving two groups of believers. Romans 3, verse 21 to 26. The sons 
fully satisfying payment made it possible for Father God to impute the Son's righteous spirit to his early believers, Peter's group, and his heavenly believers, Paul's group. Jesus Christ fulfilled the Father's plan on Calvary and redeemed and plundered and plundered back both heaven and earth believers from Satan. God had kept his hidden wisdom, the power of the cross from Satan, because if Satan had known that the Son's Spirit could be given to those who were spiritually dead in Adam, then Satan would not have, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory, 1 Corinthians 2, 8. Right Bible, the King James or, or the equivalent based on the right Hebrew and Greek text in another language have all the verses that belong in the Bible. Furthermore, without the personal pronouns such as the and the, do and ye and you, it is impossible to accurately determine who is speaking and who is being spoken to. Right division. God gave us one rule for how to understand the Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 When we study the Bible so that we are not ashamed, when we are judged for our service on earth, 2 Corinthians 5.10 We have to right, rightly divide the truth from truth. All the Bible is truth. We divide mystery from prophecy. The Bible is laid out prophecy, Genesis to Acts, mystery, Romans to Philemon, prophecy, Hebrews to Revelation. Peter preached that which God had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets. Since the world began, since Adam, Acts 3.21, Paul preached Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, Romans 16, 25. There is a present day salvation opportunity for all people. As ambassadors for Christ, we should do God's will, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Understand how to rightly divide his truth, 1 Timothy 2, 4. We should share these truths with every conversation who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2.4 The Right Gospel Salvation is by grace through faith. Ephesians 2.8-9 The most important thing in this present evil world is to believe how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4. Write Bible, the King James Bible. Warning, modern Bibles tend to remove doctrinal verses and tends to question the Word of God. The King James Bible is my final authority. Are you saved? Are you being saved? 1 Corinthians 1, 18. The KJV, where the preaching of the cross is to them that perish, foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. New King James Version. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. NIV. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, is the power of God. ESV. For the word of the cross is holy to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. NLT, the message of the cross is foolish to those who are he headed for destruction, but we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. Rightly dividing, doesn't reject any part of scripture, but only determines its application. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 KJB Israel, 
one new man, law and grace, prophecy and mystery, earth and heaven, twelve apostles and one apostle. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, ye have heard of the dispensation of grace of God which is given to me, to you onward. Ephesians 3, verse 1 to 2. Where, how, why, when, who, and what? Is your hope to live on earth or in heaven? Rightly dividing the word of truth makes the dual purpose of the cross of Christ clear to the believer. The church of today, which is Christ's body, is very separate from the Israel of God and their kingdom covenants of promises and hope of inheritance. We may have the same Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, but not the same promises, hope and inheritance. Israel, prophecy, inheritance, earth, hope, second coming, at the end of Jacob's trouble, promises, covenants, God made unto the fathers, church, mystery, inheritance, heaven, hope. Christ appears in glory before Jacob's trouble starts, promises, spiritual in heavenly places in Christ, 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Timeline Paul identifies time past but now and ages to come in Ephesians chapter 2. Israel, the circumcision and nigh unto God. The law serves a middle wall of partition. Ephesians 2, 14, 15. Gentiles, far off, without God in the world. Genesis through Malachi, the Gospels, and the book of Acts. But now, Ephesians 2, 13. The dispensation of the grace of God, mystery of Christ, is revealed, both one. Ephesians 2, 1, 14. Romans through Philemon, to come. Ephesians 2, 7. The days, the Lord's day of wrath. Israel's program is resumed and fulfilled. The kingdom of heaven is set up. Hebrews 2, Revelation. Notice that God's divine timeline is the order that the books appear in the Bible. Today, Gentiles, all nations, including Jews, all have a salvation opportunity. The blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Israel's religious leaders committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost when they stoned the Holy Ghost-filled Stephen, a member of Peter's group that gave one year renewed offer of the kingdom on earth. Matthew 12, 31, 32, Luke 13, 6 to 9. The nation of Israel fell, Acts 7, 51 to 60. But the little flock, Luke 12, 32, continued until Acts 15, when they were temporarily postponed until after our rapture. When Israel fell at the end of Acts 7, the stoning of Stephen, Israel's prophecy and law program was temporarily put on hold, and God began reconciling the world unto himself. Then in Acts 9, Saul Paul became the first to be quickened together with Christ and the first to receive forgiveness of all his sin, the first to be saved by grace through faith without works, and the first to be reconciled to God by Jesus Christ, and the first to learn about the mystery of Christ. Because Saul Paul was the first to believe the gospel of Christ for, his, for this present dispensation of grace, the Jerusalem Council or Conference of Acts 15. Paul went up to Jerusalem by revelation of Jesus Christ and informed his earthly apostles that Christ had begun a new program to his new group that will be raptured to live in heaven and that their pro program was postponed. Peter and John then loosed the 12 of the, their commission Matthew 18:18. 18, 18. Paul also told them that God's salutation to man, man's sin problem was justification by faith. In 
his son's finished work on the cross and receipt of his spirit. After the conference, Paul began writing letters to the body of Christ, which were inspired by God in his first epistle. He said that from now on, only his new good news should be preached. If any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. Galatians 1.9 He summarized the Jerusalem Conference Agreement. But contrawise then, they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, Paul, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Paul. For he that wrought effectively in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go into the heathen. Galatians 2, 7-9 The Two Ministries of Jesus Christ Two Ministries of Christ by Earthly Ministry Four Gospels and Early Acts King of Israel, John 49 Declaration, The Law and the Prophets Coming Wrath Matthew 5, verse 17, 18 Gave Himself as Ransom for the Sins of His People Matthew 20, 28 Luke 1, 68, 67 seated at the right hand of the Father, until his enemies are made his footstool. Acts 2, 34 and 36, called 12 apostles on the earth. Matthew 4, 18, 22, 10, 1 to 5. Christ commands the 12 apostles he to confine their ministry to Israel. Matthew 10, 5, 6, instructs the 12 to carry out the Great Commission, Mark 16, 14 to 18, Gospel of the Kingdom, proclaim Mark 1, 14, 15, Terms of Salvation, Repent, Believe on His Name, Submit to Water Baptism, Mark 1, 15, 16, 16, John 3, 16, 20, 31, Early Hope and Calling, Matthew 5, 5, Christ's Visible Return to the Earth, Matthew 4, 29, Acts 1, 10 to 12, eternal reign from the new Jerusalem on the new earth. Revelation 21, heavenly ministry, Paul's epistles in mid-Acts, the head of the body, Colossians 1, 18, declaration, grace and peace, Philippians 1, 2, gave himself a ransom for the sins of the world, 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6 seated at the right hand of the Father in the position of exaltation over all things to the church. Ephesians 1, 20 to 23. Called one Apostle Paul from heaven. Acts 9, 1 to 4, 26, 1, 13, 19. Christ appoints Paul the Apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11, 13. Instructs us to carry out the commission of reconciliation. Gospel of the Grace of God, proclaimed Acts 20, 24. Terms of Salvation, believe Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. Acts 16, 31, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Heavenly Hope and Calling, Colossians 1, 5. Christ's Invisible Return in Heaven, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. Eternal Reign with Christ from the New Heavens. Ephesians 1, 10, 2, 6 to 7. As members of the body of Christ, we are responsible to proclaim, defend, and stand for the heavenly ministry of Christ. Context, context, context. God's chronicle, chronological timeline in the table of contents of the King James Bible. Prophecy, mystery, prophecy. The prophecy means to speak as if divinely inspired. Mystery is divinely hidden wisdom that one can know only by divine revelation. When studying the Bible, it is best to take the literal meaning for the most part, but 
Sometimes God speaks figuratively or in types and pictures. Our edification process. God placed dispensational divisions in the King James Bible. A failure to rightly divide the word of truth has turned the Bible into a conglomeration of confusion. Do not try to put together what God has separated, making these distinctions. Clear will greatly benefit anyone who desires to grow in their understanding of God and the Bible. 2 Timothy 2.15, 2 Timothy 3.16-17 Although our Apostle Paul was saved in mid-Acts 9, we find our doctrine in Romans to Philemon. The book of Acts is a transitional in nature. Acts, Genesis to Acts is the Kingdom Gospel. Time passed, Ephesians 2, 11 to 12. Prophecy, Acts 3 to 21. Israel, Gen, um, Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Exodus 19, 6. Earth, Genesis 3, 14 to 18. 30, Exodus 32, 13. Law, Exodus 19, 3 to 6, 24. Mm. 12. Deuteronomy 6, 24, 25, 11, 27, 28. But now, mystery, the church, the body of Christ, heaven, grace, Hebrews to Revelation, kingdom gospel, ages to come, prophecy, Israel, earth, law. There is an edification process in the divine order of Paul's letters and the rest of the Bible from a Pauline perspective, from where we are in the Bible. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16 Map of Paul's Apollistic uh, Paul, Paul, journeys. In Adam, dead, guilty, kingdom of darkness, child of disobedience, enemy of God, captive of the devil, unrighteousness, indignation in hell. In Christ, quickened, forgiven, kingdom of light, child of God, peace with God, accepted in the beloved, righteousness of Christ, glory, heaven. Romans. Paul wrote to the believers in Rome, the capital of the Roman Empire from Corinth, see AD 58. After having been the apostle of the Gentiles, 1113, for about 23 years, Paul wants to edify them with more truth. Chapter 1 to 5. The book of Romans systematically and logically explains how the righteous God, by his grace, offers salvation to a world that deserves nothing but judgment. God can justify the clear righteous and unrighteous sinner by faith alone. When there is spiritual decline, departure from the true God, then there is moral decline. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. All the world is guilty before God. Romans 1, 3, 3, 20. In Adam all sin. Christ was crucified for our sins and rose again for our justification. Not only was Christ crucified and rose for us, but believers are spiritually crucified and risen with Christ. Chapter 6 to 8. Who were we were in Adam has been spiritually crucified. Romans 6, 3 to 4. And now we can have Christ's life in us. We can serve God as we know, reckon, and yield to the fact that we are dead, indeed into sin, but alive into God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We still have the sinful flesh residing in our mortal bodies, which is activated by the law of Moses. His purpose is that we be conformed to the image of His Son, 8, Romans 8.29, by his doctrine, God has now elected chosen to show mercy to the Gentiles 
so they can serve him. Chapters 9 to 11. Paul tells believers in the body of Christ that God was righteous to set Israel aside temporarily and begin the dispensation of grace to save Gentiles. The unbelieving Gentiles and Jews are his vessels of wrath. The believing remnant of Israel, Peter's group, still present but on hold at the time of the writing of Romans. And the believing Gentiles are his vessels of mercy. 11, 5, 23, 24. Through Israel's falls, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. 11, 11, 12. God is able to dispense grace to the world because of the cross of Christ. And he will save any sinner who believes that what his son has, was, has done until the rapture. But after the fullness of the Gentiles he come in, God will resume his dealings with Israel. 11, 25, 27, chapters 12, 16, practical instructions on how to live unto God. It is reasonable for us to serve God after we have been educated by God's word we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice for Christ to live his life through us. 12, 1, 2, we serve God. Our motivations is love and gratitude to God. Paul concludes the letter with a benediction. Believers are stabilized by three things. Number one, Paul's my gospel, which is justification by faith. Two, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Romans to Philemon 3, and by the scriptures of the prophets, contrasting the prophecy in the rest of the Bible. 1625 27, all nations are commanded by the everlasting God to believe the entire Bible, the whole counsel of God, rightly divided, 2 Timothy 2.15. What happened to Israel? According to the scriptures, they fell. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come to the Gentiles. For to provoke them to jealousies, Romans 11:11. 11, 11. Then are blind in part. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of the mis this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness is in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Romans 11.25 Their fullness is prophes prophesied for ages to come. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Romans 11.12 at Christ's return, all Israel shall be saved, and so all Israel shall be saved. It is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Romans 11.26 We are not spiritual Israel. There is a distinction between being made between Gentiles and Israel, because the scriptures are speaking about ages to come. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians is about the wisdom and power of God on in the cross of Jesus Christ. The preaching of the cross crucified has the power to save souls. It is reproof for not following what Christ's apostle Paul wrote in Romans. In 1 Corinthians, Paul corrects their thinking, conduct, service to God. He calls them carnal and babes as he deals with the division among them. Their overemphasis on temporary sign gifts and going to public courts to solve their disputes. He says it is better to suffer the wrong. He told them that God had a secret plan to form the body of Christ that Satan did not know about because it was not yet in the Bible. If Satan had known, he would not have allowed Christ to be crucified. 2, 6 to 8, he told them about the judgment seat of Christ. He said that they were puffed up with pride and should have dealt with the fornicator by putting him out of their local assembly. 
He informed them that Christ made him the master builder, 310, of the body of Christ, a steward of the mysteries, and the dispenser of the doctrine, 917. He defended his apostleship and wanted them to follow him as he follows Christ, 416, 17, 11, 1. Paul is always careful to give all the glory to Christ, who is in him. And he answered their questions about marriage, eating food offered to idols, and the resurrection. They should not be, they should not be unbelievers like Israel in the wilderness. He corrected them regarding respectfully celebrating the Lord's death with the Lord's Supper and to restore order in the church. He told them that sign gift would end when he had received a full revelation of the mystery from Christ. We are to do everything with charity. Finally, he said that just as the resurrection of Christ was a proven witness fact, so will our, our resurrection and rapture be. He ended the letter telling them that he would visit, but not yet because he had a great ministry opportunity at Nephesus. In the meantime, he wanted them to take up a collection for Peter and his group in Jerusalem. Paul said that if any man considered himself spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. 1437, the spiritual live according to our doctrine. First Corinthians 3, 10 to 11, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me, Paul, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build it thereon. But every, but let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, no other foundation. Peter, build according to prophecy, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Paul, built according to mystery, Romans 16, 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the mystery, revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Paul's letters to Church of Corinth, to Corinthians. Second Corinthians. 2 Corinthians is a letter to a reproof and rebuke of the believers in Corinth for not esteeming Paul as the one true apostle, 12.11. After Paul was forced to leave if Ephesus, Acts 19.22-41, he worried that Satan would try to destroy his ministry in Corinth. Also, for some question his apostleship and disdained his message, Paul was comforted by the God of all comfort. 1 3. When Titus came and told him that many believers in Corinth did believe in Christ's heavenly ministry, to them through him. 7 7. Comfort means to fortify and console, elevate distress. He vehemently defends his apostleship and message for the sake of those who do not believe the glorious gospel of Christ that he and his co-workers preach, 3, 1 to 13, 10. He gives overwhelming evidence and ammunition to those who trust him so they can defend his apostleship. Paul has to do so because Satan wants to conceal his gospel. For 1 to 4, Paul's power is from God with Christ, who, who is speaking in him and not himself. 4, 7, 6, 7, 12, 9, 13, 3, 4. But we have the treasure in earth, earthen vessels, that the elephancy of the power may be of God and not of us, that the life also of Jesus 
might be made manifest in our in our body. Four seven ten. Paul begs the Corinthians not to receive the grace of God in vain, but share the gospel. Six one two. He hopes that as their faiths grow, their hearts will be enlarged to trust his apostleship from Christ to them. Six eleven thirteen ten fifteen. He does not want them. To yoke themselves to false preachers, because then they will commit spiritual fornication. Six fourteen to sixteen, he pleads with them to separate from the false minister. Six seventeen to seven one, he begs them to receive him and his assistance. Seven two, his first letter was not just about one person who committed physical fornication by not following Christ's apostle. Seven twelve. Twelve twenty one. Paul knows that the best thing for the Corinthians is to believe the truth that Christ made him the master builder. One Corinthians three ten to build the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace. It comforts Paul, Titus, and Christ when believers believe what the Lord Jesus has said to the body of Christ through Paul. Seven seven thirteen. Paul wrote this strong yet loving letter. To correct them, so they would not continue doing wrong. Seven nine ten. Paul wants to cast down the wrong thinking strongholds of Satan. He wants the church to be like a chaste virgin. Eleven two, which he can present to Christ. Four fourteen, not someone who has been with other men, false apostles. Satan had already infiltrated the Church of Corinth, set up false apostles, masquerading as ministers of righteousness and ministers of Christ, and teach false doctrine. Eleven thirteen to fifteen twenty three. Only Paul suffered so many things for the ministry. Did the sons of an apostle, and never took any money from them. Twelve eleven twelve. Some were listening to the false ministers at Corinth. Had sinned already. Twelve twenty-one. Paul wants the Corinthians to decide to follow him, and the sound doctrine Christ gave him, not other Hebrew apostles or destructions. Before he comes to visit them, this letter comforts us when we are attacked for sharing right division today. Reconcilable, all people are savable. Two Corinthians five nineteen reconciled upon believing Paul's gospel, Galatians one four who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. We live in this present evil world, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for neither, for I neither received it of man. Neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ, Apostle Paul. Paul received the instruction for the body of Christ by revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Galatians. Galatians corrects the error of legalism that had crept into the churches in the region of Galatia, and moved them away from the truth. Christ gave them. True, Paul, at the Jerusalem Council conference, Peter, James, and John understood that Peter's group, the believing remnant of Israel, six sixteen little flock, Luke twelve thirty two was on hold, two seven to nine, and people could now only be saved into the body of Christ by believing Paul's gospel. The representatives of Israel's apostles loosed themselves from their commission. Matthew ten five six eighteen eighteen, Paul said only his gospel is to be preached. One six to nine, he told the Galatians to live by faith in his instructions to the body of Christ, and not to those who preach the law and circumcision. Some thought that if they kept the law, they would be able to control their fleshly sin nature. Some had begun to listen to law promoting Judaizers. And were being convinced to be circumcised like proselytes, 
through Ju Judaism, Genesis 17, 10, Exodus 12, 48, Matthew 23, 15, Acts 2, 10, 6, 5, 13, 42, 43, 15, 1, 24. Paul explains why members of the body of Christ do not need to be circumcised. If they think they need to keep one law to be right with God, they have to keep them all. But in the body of Christ, they are neither Jew nor Gentile. 3, 27, 28. True grace believers understand that all of the work of the cross was done by Jesus Christ. His work was enough and we could not add to it. With the removal of a little piece of skin, our circumcision is spiritual. Colossians 2, 11, 12. If Paul still preached circumcision, he would not have to endure such persecution. From the Jews, 511, Paul tells them to stand fast in the doctrine and to not go back to the living under the law. Paul glories in what Christ has done by the cross. Nothing more needs to be added to his furnished blood sacrifice for sins, his burial, and his resurrection. The justified were saved by faith, and the just shall live by faith. 311. In the word of godly, rightly divided. 2 Timothy 2.15. Paul wrote to the body of Christ who will live in heaven. The rest of the Bible is for the believers that will live on earth. But all the Bible is profitable to both groups. In Romans 7, Paul tackled the Galatian error of going back under the law instead of grace. We are not to mix God's words to us with his words to others. In chapters 1 and 2, Paul clearly establishes that Christ gave him a new and different gospel message and ministry by revelation. Salvation through Israel's fall, chapter 3 and 4 are doctrinal. In chapter 5 and 6, Christ through Paul equips them and us to live a life of victory as we walk in the spirit of by faith. Our motivation for serving God and others is love, which is a fruit of the Spirit, 522-23. It is Christ's Spirit, His life, living in and through us, 220, that produces lasting fruit as we live the spiritually crucified and spiritual resurrected life until we are physically resurrected at the rapture. Galatians is about our liberty in Christ. His instructions to his heavenly people do not include being circumcised, as were the proselytes to Judaism. Ephesians, Paul's letter to Ephesians. Ephesians was the first prison epistle Paul wrote on the house arrest in Rome. Paul said the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. With all confidence, no man forbidding him. Acts 28, 28 to 31. Ephesians is to and about the body of Christ. Three themes of the epistle are one, the Father's will for heaven and earth, two, our calling to be part of the habitation of God, and three, our unity as members of the body of Christ, the body of Christ was chosen before the foundations of the world. One, four, not the believers. Paul reveals the ministry, mystery of the Father's will to gather heaven and earth together in one in the dispensation of the fullness of time under Christ. Paul prays for us to be enlightened by the Father who did a work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. His son is exalted far above and is the head of the church, the body of Christ. Paul clearly states our lost condition in thy past when we walked according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit and the, that now works in the children's disobedience. But God was merciful and loving to us. 
And now believers are quickened and made spiritually alive with Christ and are seated in the heavenly places together with him. In time past, the Gentiles had no hope and were without God and had no part in Israel. God gave them up and over to a reprobate mind at the Tower of Babel. But now God is giving the Gentiles another chance and is offering the Gentiles grace and peace in ages to come. God will put the body of Christ on display to a testimony of his wisdom and the exceeding riches of his grace. The body of Christ now has part in the bigger household of God made up of heaven and earth believers. Paul then clearly and concise, concisely explains the mystery of Christ. The fellowship of the mystery is that both saved Jews and saved Gentile are in one group. The circumcision is not above the uncircumcision in our group, for we are all one and the same level in this body of believers. The Father had manifold wisdom and the Son's great love to save us. Paul prays for us to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in our heart by faith so we can be rooted and grounded in love and understand the Father's manifold wisdom that the good and the bad angels are learning about, that we may comprehend what God said and be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul glorifies the Father's wisdom and the Son's love and the power of His Spirit in us for all eternity. Ephesians is primarily a treatise on the body of Christ as a whole. Paul introduces us to the Father and His purpose and destiny for the body of Christ and the exaltation of His Son as preeminent ruler over heaven and earth. The body of Christ is sealed in Christ by the Holy Spirit of promise. The earnest of the entire purchased possession is to be raptured. Each individual has the Holy Spirit in them. An entire body of Christ is sealed. The mystery of his Father's will is to have one kingdom with one be only believers, with two realms in heaven and on earth. The body of Christ is to be, is to the praise of his glory. Paul prays for enlightenment for the believer of the believers to understand Father, God, and his plan for them. Paul uses us, we, you, he, as plural, you, because he is writing about the corporate body of Christ, the house of God, 219, the temple of God, and the family of God, 315. Describe the kingdom of God made up of heaven and earth with Christ as the chief cornerstone, which could be pictured as a cross because he redeemed both groups, both Peter, 1 Peter 2.6 and Paul, Ephesians 2.20. Call Christ the chief cornerstone. Christ is the foundation, 1 Corinthians 3.11. The prophets are on top of that foundation. There are 12 apostles in prophecy, one apostle in mystery. Paul is writing down the previously unknown revelation for us. The mystery of Christ is the formation of the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace. Other people besides the Apostle Paul were gifted by the Spirit to edify the body of Christ in the beginning of the church. The goal is for everyone to understand the truth of the mystery and speak the truth in love, share this truth with others, and to edify each other. We are to walk worthy of our vocation as ambassadors and members of the body of Christ. There is a sevenfold unity of the body of Christ, 4, 3 to 6. We are a team that has been saved by grace. We are put off the old man, the flesh, and put on the new, Christ. If we do not get along with each other, we give place to the devil and we grieve the Holy Spirit that has sealed the body of Christ until it is redeemed, raptured. Follow God and walk in love toward those in the body of Christ. Be self-sacrificing like Christ. 
be thankful and not like the lost, the unsaved. His spirit in us will produce good fruit. Share the truth of the mystery. Let there be harmony among the body of Christ. Be thankful and submit yourself to one another. Christ loved the church as a husband is to love his wife. The church should submit to Christ like a wife to her husband. The body is joined to our head. Children, obey your parents. Parents, train up your children in the Lord. Our master is in heaven. Serve him. Whether you are an employer or an employee, for which one of those you are does not matter to God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God and stand against the Satan. He is the one that is against the mystery. Our shield is the faith Christ gave to Paul. The belt is truth. The helmet is to know in your mind. The certainty of the blessed hope, our pre-tribulation rapture. As ambassadors serving the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, we are to boldly share the mystery. All our blessings are in heavenly places, and our enemies are there right now. Entrance into the body of Christ is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Our hope is in the person of Jesus Christ to preach the gospel. Pauline doctrine requires great boldness because Satan is against it. Mainline Christianity has been deluded by him. Everyone in the body of Christ is saved, but many in denominational churches are not. Satan doesn't want anyone to see the truth of the mystery that has been revealed. He wants to conceal it. If someone has come to understand the mystery, the devil wants him to be moved away from this truth. Certainly, Satan is in both heaven and earth. 2, 2, 2 Corinthians 4, 2. People saved by grace should act as who they are in Christ, not live like lost unbelievers. We are not to walk worthy, walk in love, and walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The body of Christ should be subject to Christ, just like a wife is to be to her husband in everything. As we stand our ground together in the power of his Christ, in his Christ's might against Satan's onslaught, we will succeed in spreading an understanding of the mysteries of others to others. We fight from victory since Christ has already won the war. Our responsibility is to hold on to that victory by standing our ground and sharing the fellowship of the mystery. Saved Jews and Gentiles are in one heaven-bound group. Philippians. Paul began with grace be unto you. Paul was concerned about Philippians' state. He wants them to move on their growth. He prayed for them to know what is most important and said he was ready to defend the gospel and magnify Christ at his trial before Caesar. For them to live was Christ and to die as gain. He said that they are to care for others better than themselves by sharing the gospel and the mystery. Work together in unity, same love, for one mind. He gave five examples of those who cared about others better than themselves. Paul's greatest desire since he was apprehended by the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, Acts 9, 22, 26, is to win Christ and know the fellowship of his suffering to save others and live the crucified, resurrected life on a deeper level. He counts his previous religious life as done compared with a personal relationship with the living Lord Jesus Christ and new love that captivated him. And he was living a Christ-addicted life. He wants to be found having the righteousness of Christ. Here, now, as he lives his life to apprehend every detail of the reason he was called to serve as his apostle to the Gentiles, to form the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace. He presses on to the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Jesus, my Lord, Philippians 3.8.
Christ is the prize. Paul wanted to be conformed to Christ's image and have him living his life in him 100% of the time. 3, 9, 10, Galatians 2, 20. And put away any vestiges of sin nature. Paul teaches them and us how to pray, what to think about, and what to do. He says to do what I do, 4, 9. We cannot do something worthwhile in the energy of our flesh. Christ gives us His Spirit and His Word. We can also say, I can do all, all things through Christ, which strengthens me. 4.13 He thanks them for their gift. He knows they are praying for His release from house arrest and, ha and closes with grace be with you. The purpose of the letter, number one, thank them for their support and gift. Two, give advanced instruction for how to live the gracious the grace life. Three, explain that he is about to make his defense before Caesar, and he is not sure if he will live or die. Four, he encourages them to serve Christ and others. Five, serve together in unity. Love had captivated him, and he was living a Christ-addicted life. He wants to be found having the righteousness of Christ here and now as he lives his life and to prehend every detail for, of the reason he was called to serve as his apostle of the Gentile to form the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace. He presses on to the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Jesus, my Lord, Philippians 3, 8. Christ is the prize. Paul wanted to be conformed to Christ's image and have him living his life in him 100% of the time. 3, 9, 10, Galatians 2, 20. Put away any vintages of the sin nature. Paul teaches them and us how to pray, what to think about, and what to do. He says, do what I do. We cannot do something worthwhile in the energy of our flesh. Christ gave us His Spirit and His Word. So we can also say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. 4.13 He thanks them for their gift. He knows that they are praying for His release from house arrest and closes with grace be with you. The purpose of the letter, one. Thank them for their support and gift. Two, give advanced instruction for how to live grace life. Three, explain that he is about to make his defense before Caesar. He is not sure if he will live or die, or he encourages them to serve Christ and others. Five, serve together in unity. Six, not to be terrified by their adversaries. Seven, remind them that they have the power of prayer and the supply of the Spirit. Eight, stand fast in doctrine. Share the gospel and the doctrine. Hold fast the word of life. Nine, that the peace of God comes after praying with thanksgiving and what to thank, think on. Ten, he is praying for them and they will suffer for their faith. 11. Defend the reason Aphrodite was delayed. 12. Inform them that Timothy is coming soon and hopefully Paul also. 13. The Spirit of Jesus Christ in them is their strength and ours. 14. Think on things that bring joy. 15. Renew your, our minds in His Word. 16. Their sanctification is a deeper conforming to Christ's death and resurrection, life in and through them. Colossians, after declaring the preeminence of the Son of God, the Redeemer over all things, governmental levels of authority in heaven and earth, that all things were made by him, for him. For him. 1, 12, 21, Paul gives the Colossians full assurance of the truth of the mystery preached in all the world 
so that no man can beguile you with enticing words, 2.4, or human wisdom, not after Christ's wisdom, if the Gentile believers continue in the faith. Ro Romans 16.25, then the formation of the body of Christ in this dispensation of God will continue and more heaven-bound saints will be saved. 122.29, these saints were in Christ, 1.2, and had Christ in you and the hope of glory, 127.27. All treasure and wisdom are in thee, three, the three mysteries of God, the Father, the Son, no, the Father and the Christ. Ye are complete in him, 2.10, when we believed we were spiritually quickened together with him, having forgiveness, forgiven you all trespasses. 2.13. This operation of God resulted in the blotting out of the handwriting of the ordinances, accusations of wrongdoing that were against us, nailing it, that, that list to his cross. 2.14. Christ spoiled or plundered Satan and his fallen angels in the cross by giving a spirit to believers in heaven and on earth. This is how different saints in light have part in two different realms of the kingdom of his dear son. Paul asks, why are you not continuing to follow Christ's instructions through me, but turn back to doctrines of men, which cannot satisfy or manage your sinful flesh, do not put your affection on Israel's program or man's wisdom. Set your affections on things above because that is where we are going. 2 Corinthians 5, 1, Ephesians 1, 3, and not on the earth, 3, 2. We are dead with Christ. The only solution for the sinful flesh is to mortify it. Do not do the things the lost people are doing for the wrath of God, God's angry judgment is coming on the children of disobedience. 3.6 You used to be unbelievers like them when you followed him. Human viewpoint, idolatry, there's no value in say something that is not the Lord's instruction through Paul. Filthy communication is to speak lies. We have already put off the old man who were, were in Adam with his deeds and put on the new man. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Be thankful that you are in the body of Christ, where there is no distinction between believers, for everyone has the Spirit in them. Christ is all in all. 3, 10, 11. Christ is our life. So let him live through you. Say no to your sinful flesh. Above all else, put on charity the bond of perfectness. Let the word of Christ dwell in your, you richly, teaching and cautioning one another with singing in your hearts to the Lord. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father and by Him. Paul gives instructions for holy conduct in the church, family, and the workplace. We can serve the Lord in all that we do, knowing that we will reap the reward of the inheritance, 324, our jobs in heaven. Paul said, pray for me. Israel had 12 apostles. Matthew 10, 5, 6, these 12, Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into the city of the Samaritan. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The church, the body of Christ has one apostle. Romans 11, 13, For I speak to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. 1 Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians Although Paul had only preached to the Thessalonians church over a period of three Sabbaths, they were in samples. He has nothing but praise for this model church not only to the other churches in Macedonia and Asgeia, but very every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything that they sounded out of the, out 
the word of the Lord. He tells them they were already doing the right thing. Paul looks back at his ministry among the Thessalonians. Paul said they came to them in the power of the gospel and in the Holy Ghost, Romans 1.16, and did not let their cruel treatment at Philippi stop them. They know what the Lord Jesus Christ has done and that he sent Paul to be their apostle. Satan had injured Paul twice from coming to Thessalonica. When Paul could no longer stand the suspense of how they were holding up in the face of strong persecution, he sent a model brother because he was hindered from going to them himself. Paul got around the temper, tempter, Satan 3.5, by sending brother Timothy with Sil Silvanus, Silas, to check on them and to establish them in the faith. In other, word, in other words, they were sent to do aftercare. Paul wanted to be sure that these saints were not moved away from the faith, the doctrine he had taught them, but would thrive and grow. Paul wanted to perfect that which they may be lacking in their faith. He longed to teach them more sound doctrine. After Paul sent Timothy and Silvanus to check on how their faith was holding up under persecution, Paul was comforted by Timothy's good report. Paul was happy that they want to see them again and are standing fast in the faith. They delivered to them. She is thrilled that they are sharing the message of grace everywhere they can. Paul praises them always, remembering in his prayers, you work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and our Father, 1-3. Since so many have suffered great affliction, tribulation, and even been martyred, he emphasizes their hope to live in heaven. Every chapter ends with a reference to Christ's coming. Paul is a model minister serving the Lord and his people while pray, paying in his own way. Paul just encourages them with his example to bear up other under persecution. He rejoices that they desired greatly for Apostle Paul to come to them that teach them some more about the mystery. He gives practical instructions for a worthy walk of service to God. They are his joy and crown of reward. Our crown is people we have led to Christ. He goes into detail about the body of Christ being caught up, 4-7, to meet the dead in Christ when the Lord appears with them in the air. Our hope can comfort us and help us endure hardness. Following the rapture comes the day of the Lord, which the church has no part in because the body of Christ is not appointed to that. Paul describes the tribulation to show that we are not going through it, but we will be raptured before it. God will bring his ambassadors home before the war. He ends the letter with the series of exhortations. 2 Thessalonians A forged letter had caused them to doubt their hope, so Paul was soon forced to write a second letter to clear up the confusion about the pre-tribulation rapture. He praises their faith and love in the midst of persecution, but omits praising their hope. Paul indicates them by correcting the false doctrine. Paul beseeches in mind or trouble. He understood both prophecy and mystery. mystery. Paul gives one of his best summaries of the tribulation or day of the Lord. Paul gives one of his best summaries of the tribulation or day of the Lord, an antichrist found anywhere in scripture to show day and we are not in it. 2, 3 to 12. Paul concludes with thankfulness that God had ordained that the body of Christ would be saved from having to go through the tribulation 
by being raptured before it begins. Believers can be consoled by this truth in the midst of persecution now that their hearts are comforted and they are stable concerning their hope. They can get back to every good word and work. 2, 3, 17. Next, Paul encouraged them to live and work according to the truth they did received from Paul. Paul asked for prayer so the word of the Lord can have free course and be glorified in others as it was in them. He reminds them that there are unreasonable and wicked men who do not believe and are against God's work. But the Lord is faithful who will keep them stable in the word of truth. Paul commands that if any will not work, neither should they eat. 310. Those who do not follow Paul or work should be admonished and not accompanied with. Why were the Thessalonians a model church? Because they believe the pure doctrine of Christ taught them by through Christ's Apostle Paul. These saints clearly understood the mystery and the distinctive ministry of their one Apostle Paul and that God was saving Gentiles to form another group of people to live in heaven. The body of Christ will be removed from the earth before God resumes his prophetic dealings with Israel. The model church that the Thessalonians were it what we should be to rightly divide time past but now ages to come but remember we are an, on enemy territory this isn't a game this is spiritual war next are Paul's pastoral epistles first Timothy Paul wrote Timothy an epistle that clearly spelled out and reminded him what he was supposed to do in, as overseer of the church in Ephesus in case his return from Macedonia is delayed. 3.15 He is to command some that they teach no other doctrine than the one Christ revealed to Paul. Christ revealed the mystery that God... Christ revealed the mystery that God had interrupted, paused, and put on hold the prophetic program through the twelve apostles and begun saving another group, the body of Christ, during the dispensation of grace to live in heaven. Paul put two men out of the assembly that desired to teach the law. They had put away their good conscience and lost their hold on the true doctrine and made shipwreck of their faith. Of their faith. These men are exhibit A and B of what happens when people move away from the truth Christ delivered to the body of Christ through Apostle Paul. Paul calls mixing earthly instructions, Christ's instructions to his heavenly group, doctrines of devils, and the blasphemous teacher seducing spirits, fruit 4.1. To be without the word of God to us, Romans to Philemon, is to be delivered unto Satan. In Paul's day, the truth was found in the local assembly because they had copies of Paul's letters. But today, the truth is in the King James Bible or other equivalent Bibles in other languages. Paul lists the qualifications for bishops and deacons. Women are not to teach men in the local assembly. Believing widows in need over 60 should be supported. Paul gives advice on how to treat others. In the assembly, Timothy is to appoint officers and to make sure that they only teach the sound doctrine Paul received from Christ. The pure instructions to the body of Christ when believed produces charity. Christ's love through the believer out of pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. 1 5. Believing widows in need over 60 should be supported. Paul gives advice on how to treat others in the assembly. Timothy is to appoint officers and to make sure that they only teach sound doctrine. Paul received from Christ to pure instructions to the body of Christ when believed produces charity. Christ's love through the believer out of a pure heart 
and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. 1 5. Paul said Christ was merciful and long suffering to him. Paul was the first sinner placed into the body of Christ. He is a pattern for other saved sinners to follow. Timothy may also have to put some false teachers out of the assembly. The, min the mystery of godliness is that Christ is manifesting himself through the Pauline believers until the rapture, 316. He wants Timothy to say there and fight for the truth. If any do not believe the wholesome words of our Lord Jesus Christ, then he is proud and destitute of the truth, so withdraw from him. The rich should contribute to getting the truth out. Timothy should be a model believer to others, and not be afraid to speak the truth. Just as Christ was brave and spoke the truth before Pilate, be sure to keep the doctrine Christ had committed to me pure. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings. 620. Timothy should focus on his eternal rewards and avoid vain babblings, anything that is not Pauline truth, that so-called science that does not line up with the Bibles are men's theories that oppose God's word, such as evolution. Second Timothy is the last letter Paul wrote before he was put to death. It is Paul's intensely personal last will and testament. Paul's purpose is threefold. First, to ask Timothy to come to visit him, not 4, 9 to 11. Second, to encourage Timothy to boldly hold the faith, 1, 7, 8. And third, to preach the word in the midst of apostasy, because the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, 4, 2 to 4. Having been rearrested, taken to Rome, and put in prison, Paul writes to Timothy in the middle of his court hearings. Things are not going well. All men forsake me, 416. Paul is ready for the verdict, recognizing that my departure is at hand, 46. It is also a handbook for how to minister in the midst of apostasy, which makes it an ideal book for our time. Members in the church, the body of Christ, are currently living in the last days of the dispensation of grace. Many have trusted in Jesus Christ for their salvation, but very few have come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2.4 Satan is doing a good job of keeping the largest denomination, the Church of the Ignorant Brethren, blind and growing. In his first letter, Paul gave Timothy a charge to keep the doctrine Christ gave to the body of Christ through Paul, pure to avoid fables and to edify the saints. In the second letter, Paul gave Timothy a challenge to fight the good fight to keep the doctrine. Christ gave Paul the same as he received it. it for seven, Timothy should, be, should not be ashamed of Paul, doubt the truth, or be fearful. Paul fought for the true doctrine to the body of Christ, and now he urges Timothy to fight for it also. Paul assures Timothy that he has the help of the Holy Ghost in him and that Christ is the one who will keep his doctrine pure. Paul knew that the age of grace would outlive him. Paul charged Timothy to keep the doctrine Christ gave pure, Paul pure to avoid false doctrine and to edify the saints in the church. He was to pass the charge down the line to faithful men who would in turn entrust it to others. A timeline of events that occur at the end of Paul's life. See AD 58. Paul was taken prisoner in Jerusalem. AD 61. After this for shipwreck, Paul arrives in Rome on house arrest. AD 61 to 63. Paul underwent his first Roman imprisonment. Acts 28, 30, 31. AD 64-67, Paul was released from house arrest and traveled extensively to check up on the churches. Perhaps he made his planned trip to Spain, Romans 15-24-28.
It was during this time that he wrote 1 Timothy and Titus. A.D. 67, Paul was arrested again and taken to Rome and put in a dungeon. A.D. 68, secular history tells us that Paul was beheaded in Rome under Nero. Before he died, wrote 2 Timothy. Titus, Paul's letters to Titus was written from Macedonia while he was traveling as a free man in between his two Roman imprisonments. Paul was released from Roman house arrest circa A.D. 63. This letter is, it is written circa A.D. 64 65, or about 12 or 13 years after the council circa A.D. 52. It was probably written about the same time as he wrote 1 Timothy in 1 and 2 Timothy. The emphasis is on doctrine, the truth, on, in Titus. The emphasis is on good works. We first hear that Titus at the Jerusalem Council, Titus was a Gentile and Paul refused to circumcise him. So they went up to Jerusalem to resolve the issue. Galatians 1 and 2. Paul gave his estimation of Titus in 2 Corinthians. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. 2 Corinthians 8.23 Paul and Titus had ministered together on the large Mediterranean island of Crete. Paul had other churches to check on, so he left Titus in charge of overseeing and seeking the churches on Crete in order until he could send either Titus or Arminius to replace him. Paul's Paul's hurry in leaving made it necessary for him to write to encourage and instruct his dedicated co-labor. He was to ordain elders. He warned Titus about the false Jewish teaching who opposed their ministry. The inhabitants of Crete were notorious for their proverbial low character as a result Paul needed someone strong enough to stand up to them the letter was probably brought to Titus by Apollos and Zenius 3rd 13 Paul wrote to give Titus encouragement instructions and warning the letter is very very matter very matter of fact Paul didn't need to coddle Titus while Timothy was timid Titus was bold We all have different personalities. He was tough and reliable like Paul. Timothy was left at Ephesus, a fairly stable church, while Titus could be counted on to carry out his assignment among the more obstinate inhabitants on Crete. This is Paul's instruction to Titus for the organization of the churches. He is to warn the saints not to listen to false teachers of the circumcision. Paul enumerates the qualifications of bishops. He helps him to pastor different kinds of people so they can be careful to maintain good works. 3.8. Good works are joining in with what God is doing currently. 1 Timothy 2.4. He is to preach the appearing of Jesus Christ and our blessed hope. 2.11.14. Be subject to civil rulers in Titus. Paul portrays Jesus Christ as God our Savior three times. 1 3 2 10 3 4. We have salvation and eternal life because of his work and mercy, not ours. 3 4 7. While our salvation is by grace through faith and a free gift without works, after we are saved, doing good works for God is our reasonable service. Romans 12 12. 12 2. The doctrine must be adorned with doing what to do with heretics and how to deal with troublemakers. After his replacement arrives, he is to go to meet Paul in the Nicopolis for the winter. Titus was also with Apostle Paul during his second imprisonment. From there, he traveled on a ministry mission to Damaltia. Philemon. This brief letter pictures 
substitutionary death and imputation. It is a snapshot into the heart of our apostle. And we also learn how the body of Christ is supposed to work using gracious communication motivated by love among believers. Paul asked Philemon, which means affectionate, to forgive his slave ominous, ominous, which means profitable, who had robbed him and ran away. Paul greets the dearly beloved Philemon, a fellow laborer, his wife, and his son, a fellow soldier, probably a pastor, in their home with grace and peace from God our Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ, he thanks God for Philemon and prays that the communication of his faith may, be, may become affectional. By the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in him, because Jesus Christ is in him, Colossians 1.27, Christ in us makes us profitable to God if we obey our instructions, Romans to Philemon. Paul has great joy because he has heard the believers are refreshed by Philemon's generous, loving hospitality. Instead of immediately pleading for mercy for his disobedient slave's life, Paul first expresses sincere appreciation for his friend. Grace does not force nor order with diplomacy. Paul said that for love's sake, he would rather beseech him, not order him to do what he taught it was best. Under Roman law, a master could could have a thieving and runaway slave put to death. But now that Ominous is saved and understands the mystery, he who was formerly unprofitable can be profitable to thee and to me. He can help Paul further the gospel. I return him to you, so please receive him as one from my own heart. I would have retained him with me, and instead of you, he might minister to my age needs while in bonds and the needs of the ministry. But I would not keep him without your consent, that your reward would not be because you were forced to let me keep him, but that you did so by free choice. Perhaps he left you for a little while so that you could receive him forever. So just as a servant, but as a beloved brother, especially to me. But n now much more to you, both in person and in the Lord. If you count me, therefore, a partner in the ministry, receive him as you would me substitution if he had wronged you or owes you anything then put <coughs> that on my account imputation i wrote this iou with my own hand and i will repay it <coughs> however <coughs> i do not need to remind you that you were also saved by my preaching. Yes, brother, let me have joy and be refreshed in the Lord because of your decision to forgive him. I have confidence that Christ in you will do more than request it and even set him free. But in either case, prepare me a place to live for I trust that through your prayers, I will soon get out of house arrest. Paul sends greetings from the saints that are with him. We, as ominous, a servant of Christ, will likewise return to our master at the rapture. Once you have learned Paul's doctrine and dispensational right division of the KGV Bible, popular TV preachers and traditional churches seem so vain and empty to tr of truth and void of substance. Paul's doctrine, Romans through Philemon, KJV. All the Bible is written for us, but Paul's 13 epistles are written directly to us. Feed Christ's spirit in you, God's word, rightly divided so he can live through you.
believed the KJB Bible. <clears throat> this verse tells us Paul was the person that penned the last of God's words in the Bible. Colossians 1.25 Where I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. And this verse tells us Paul was the last person to see Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15.8 And the last of all he was seen of me, also as one born out of due time. We always remember that the Bible is our final authority and that commentaries, preaching, and teaching is only meant to help our understanding of what God said. <clears throat> what matters is what God said. It doesn't matter what you say or what I say or what any preacher says. We must look at the KG Bible for ourselves. What said the scriptures? That thy truth for thou has magnified the word. Thou all thy name.